G'day my friends and welcome to Marty's Garden Live and today we're talking about the benefits of underground worm farming. Now I know I've changed the time a little bit, we're coming in about half an hour later than before, uh, just allows me a bit more time to sleep in and if anything's going wrong, which there was with the software and stuff like that, then uh, yeah it gives me a little bit more time to kick off and also the Queenslanders because uh, they're an hour ahead of us, get to come in a bit later. So, yeah, we're working at uh, the 9.45 a.m. Sydney, Melbourne time uh, at the moment here. And uh, welcome to uh, everyone that's come in to uh, watch the show. Now, uh, you can hear my voice, still a bit croaky, uh, still getting over just the end of this flu here. But I've got my water. And... We are ready to rock and roll. Now, we're going to be looking at a product called the SubPod today. Just using that as an example, because I believe it's the best product on the market. And I am affiliated with this company. So keep in mind, if you ever if you do buy it, please grab it through the purchase link that's in the description uh, available uh, today. Um, we've got a few things to cover and uh, sort of related to the channel and some things where, uh, what's sort of going on into the future. But firstly, what we wanna do is we really want to look at uh, the benefits of an underground worm farm because I absolutely love these things. And the first time I ever tried one um, was about eight years ago in growing in, in sand. And I didn't have a lot of, you know, I had hardly any money at the moment. Then a car was only three years old, maybe. Oh, so I know, mate, we're talking maybe five. So, <laughs> mate, we're talking like 11 years ago. Wow, I'm losing time here. So I just, I got a um, an olive drum, drilled a whole lot of holes in it, in the bottom and around the sides and things like that. And I planted uh, these cherry tomatoes around the edge of it. And then I put like a TP of tomato steaks and then in the ground, there was a lid and I could unscrew the lid and get into the farm. And I left a gap between the TP and the cherry tomatoes. Now I tried, had tried growing cherry tomatoes in that spot, not successfully uh, because the ground was just so sandy. And yeah, and anyway, by the time I, I sort of got this down and I was getting into the worm farming and built my first underground worm farm, I actually got really good tomato growth. And the roots were growing, so I made really big holes, which was probably, it was a good and a bad thing, but the roots were growing into the bucket, like a hydroponic system, say, would, or something like that, where the roots grow in. And it was actually grabbing hold of the nutrient and pulling it out. And so I could look at it every time when I was sort of feeding it and stuff and seeing how much the roots were growing by unscrewing the lid. And that's when I just got this explosive, wow. How good is this? Worm farming is even better <laughs> than I thought. And uh, so anyway, I'm going to go over the benefits. So we've got a list here of benefits and, a, and some tips as well on how to uh, maintain them. So let's get into uh, pulling up one of these images here of a sub pod under the ground. I think it's one of the better images to look at. I do have other videos on uh, called Permaculture Worm Farm. Uh, on my channel if you want to have a look uh, at those. And if you've used um, underground worm farming systems, I'd really love to hear what you think about them also. Um, and yeah, and what your experience is with them and any questions that you may have. So we'll move into the Q&A at the end. But first, we'll just go through the benefits and some of the tips and we'll pull up this image here and we will have a good look at the sub pod. Now, this this type of worm farm is basically it sits. Uh, firstly, let's get into the um, how this company originate. Now, have you ever heard of Flow Hive from the Byron Shire area? Well, it's the same uh, people that started Flow Hive, which was a raging success, then started uh, Subpod. So they're actually in the same area uh, where I live, and uh, really good uh, company. They really care about the environment and things like that. So this is one of the first. Uh, I believe one of the better underground worm farms you can buy. There are some other ones by other companies and they're just small pipes, a couple of holes, plastic molding, nothing great. You'd be better off building DIY ones out of buckets and things like I, I said before. 
But the thing about this, this the sub pod is, is there's a lot of airflow, there's a lot of holes, there's a lot of way for the good bacteria to move in and out, and it works more like a sump, really, where the other ones, um, it's really hard to get that much sort of like airflow and worm flow into uh, a DIY uh, worm farm. Now, you can see, if you hopefully you can see here some of the images, it says, we'll start at the top, it says plants grow, food waste, compost, airflow, worm flow, and soil level. So we'll start at plants grow first. And basically what's happening is, is as we're feeding these the compost worms in there, and we've uh, they, they move in and out of the farm, depositing their worm castings and around the roots of the plants. And that, so that's self-fertilizing. And also we do use a good quality compost in the, the, the farm if we can as well. So every time we're watering that, it's leaching out, uh, reaching out to the other plants. And also as, <clears throat> as the material's leaching, it's not uh, becoming anaerobic, it's going straight into the soil profile and feeding the good bacteria and everything around the system. So, um, you know, they are a bit of uh, an outlay at first, but very well built product. I, we gave one away to um, a, a, play, a community garden uh, a bit over a year ago now, uh, around time of COVID actually. So it was a bit of a wild time, but uh, yeah, great success. I've got one here. I'm about to put another one uh, into the ground here at my place into one of the raised uh, birdies beds and use that and use my overflow from my worm farms to go into the underground worm farm. So the food waste is the organic waste that we uh, have from our household. Anything that we're using, kitchen scraps, things like that, going into there instead of out into the green bin. And one thing I like about this way of re waste removal is um, we don't have as many problems in these type of worm farms. So if the waste is going a bit anaerobic, whatever, we can really flush it hard and then just sort of move it through. We can just sort of pull a bit out and throw it in the bin if we've got too much. And it, and we can, probably the biggest, hardest issue with it would be harvesting from it. But you would har you harvest just from one side and then you fill the other side and sort of move across like you do uh, in some of these other types of farms. So yeah, feed one side, move your food slowly to the other side, and then you can harvest the castings. But what I what I do is basically I just pull the castings out and just throw it around the outside of the farm to keep the biology all together and move it move those castings further out into the raised beds uh, to the other plants. So I think it's uh they're they're really, really um a great system. And, you know, congratulations, Subpod, for being able to keep this company running. They offered me some shares to buy in it recently, but um, I just didn't have the, the funds to uh, to purchase into it. Otherwise, uh, if I had a bit of spare cash lying around for investment, I definitely would have uh, bought some shares in Subpod. And who knows, I may do uh, into the future as well. And as I'm saying, I am affiliated with this company and... Um, you know, so basically, the only way how I'm affiliated is basically, you know, I just get a affiliate cut back a small a small bit of money if someone uh, buys one of the products. But I only stand behind things that I really believe in, and very rarely uh, bring products to uh, the market. And so let's go side by side here and have a, a bit of a chat about it. Now I've got some um, some of the benefits here, right? So I'm just going to read them out again. Easy to maintain. Worms move in and out, so there's no need to migrate the worms. self fertilizes the garden, minimal uptake and upkeep. Uh, and the, the biggest tips would be for it, and I do have um, a, a really good DIY system that we build at my friend Waz's, and that's in the members area. If you go into the level three, you can access that. And we've used the upside down compost bin, um, one of those tumblers with a lid on it to build it and it shows the full build out. So if you haven't, if you're already a worm wrangler, uh, level three, make sure you check that out so you can see one in full build. And like, we're talking a really good system, uh, pretty close to, to what you can make with the sub pod, but bigger, right? So, uh, and you, anyway, check that out. 
And if you're not a Worm Wrangler member, I do suggest that you consider uh, becoming a member and helping uh, this channel uh, survive. Um, yeah, we're going through a bit of a rough trot at the moment. It's because everywhere is cold and, you know, people aren't gardening and stuff. And so we're down about 30% of our traffic and uh, really it's not even paying the rent at the moment. So that's, you know, if you can help out in that regards, uh, that would be really great. And also you can um, go over to the page, buy me a coffee, where uh, you can also support this channel, become a member. And even uh, if you would like to and help me to keep these uh, live shows running uh, more productive and have a better quality of product, I've got this ticker running below at me at the moment. I don't know how to stop it. I think you can see that. It says sample ticker. This will demonstrate... Uh, I, I really like my the Ecamm one. At the moment, I'm using the free EV marks. Um, it works okay, but I can't get the quality of the show that I really like to keep maintaining. So there is a, um, a raise, raise the funds for get the Ecamm live again because Australian, the Australian dollar is really low at the moment. It's three hundred eighty four dollars, I think, for the year to get Ecamm live, which end up being about five hundred fifty Aussie dollars. And um, it just doesn't, unfortunately, uh, at the moment, I can't afford that. So if anyone can help me, maybe we can start raising some funds towards that. That would be really, really helpful. Anyway, let's get into some tips for the sub pod. We will go back to it here and have a look at it again. So you, what you want to do is you want to get a lot of mulch and uh, around the outside of these systems, right? Now... I know you're going to have some really awesome questions coming up, so just hold them up. We are going to pull some people across uh, here in a minute and start talking about it. But you need to have a lot of mulch around these systems so when the worms are coming out, they can move underneath that litter, the leaf litter or the mulch, and um, deposit their castings. And, you know, the castings sit on top and then will slowly move down through. And they will move around the top six inches as well uh, if you've got a lot of compost around the outside. So I highly recommend that you use mushroom compost or a good quality compost inside these systems to get a better result. Um, you know, things like cocoa peat and stuff like that don't have uh, the nutrient level for uh, making these work really well. So uh, yeah, I highly recommend that you uh, use some use some type of compost. And generally mushroom compost is the most common one around. And the worms really love that. And it does uh, feed the system uh, quite well and make a high quality casting. Now around the outside, of the farm here also, uh, you need to put compost around the outside, not just into the farm, but around the outside so the worms will move in and out uh, freely and you know a, a good compost of soil. So around the outside, you might have a soil mixed uh, as it's going out wider, but then you'll have a nice thick layer of mulch on top and they can move under the layer. See, as the worms get larger, they'll travel further. And when they're smaller, they stay together and you know they wait until they uh, mature and start breeding and things. And then the bigger mature worms will move out further looking for new habitat. And this is when we can actually put like two farms at the end of each of a large raised bed. So it's like my uh, birdies one. But you'll find that actually when they're really pumping, um, a, a good size, like the prop, there's two sizes for the for this uh, sub pod. There's a large one that would do a whole raised bed if you put it in the middle, not at the end. I'm gonna put mine at the end, but if you built it out and put it in the middle, it'll work really good like that. Just remember that you've got to reach to the end. Uh, the, the smaller ones you could put, if you've got a big farm, uh, big raised beds, you could put two smaller ones at each end. Now remember, you don't have to buy the sub pod. You can make your own. And as I said, I've got, uh, there's some lessons in the um, Worm Wranglers members area there for that. And I do have another video, a free video called Permaculture Worm Farm uh, on my channel, which discusses it um, further again. Now, one of the extra benefits of this, and this is something that I highly recommend for people that are doing worm farming specifically for growing gardens is you have uh, your normal worm farms or your plastics worm farms or your DIY worm, wherever you're breeding and feeding worms, and then your overflow goes into these systems. So your overflow from your worm farms go into something like an underground worm farm and because the worms do spread out over time or moving to other habitats and things like that and we could go further into trapping them in other spots and moving them into other systems i'm going to be doing a lot of that 
coming onto this channel. Uh, now we're really starting to breed up some serious worm numbers and start moving them around. Uh, so yeah, that's gonna be interesting. You'll see how everything's connected throughout this whole permaculture yard and space that I have. All right, so I'm gonna have a quick drink of water here. I think we've covered quite a lot in that. We've gone quite in depth of how they work, what they do. Um, you really need to start off with around a minimum of 1,000 worms. The cheapest way to do it, if you're going full DIY, would just buy the buy a bag of cocoons, which is equivalent to 1,000 worms, and build it out like I show you in the Worm Wranglers members area. Uh, you can make a smaller one to the same way that I've shown you there, or you know, watch the free uh, the free video. Also, in the ebook, we do talk about um, underground worm farms um, as well. All right, so let's move into some comments here and we will just get rid of this put me side by side and like it hey everyone thanks so much for coming checking it out really appreciate you uh uh coming here and uh turning up for the for the live show <laughs> green of life says he was first here we got some people saying hello i will get back to you as a big hello and um yeah as i said welcome Thanks for coming to watch uh, the Marty's Garden Show. Let me know also if you think that this, um, maybe this software's enough. Maybe it's good enough and uh, I'm going overkill. But I'm using the free one at the moment and they just told me I can't record any more content. So uh, I can record and bring out live, but I can't actually record anything um, and then uh, store it on my computer to use for future stuff, which I really like to do. If I get a really good question, I can turn it into uh, a short form video and put it onto the channel or into, not, not so much always a shorts, but you know, a quick quick video tip and build up lots of content to go onto the channel uh, into the future. So people can just look stuff up and it's just like a full, what do you call it? Like a worm farming uh, thesaurus. I don't know if that's the right word, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll keep bringing people across here and uh sorry i just as i said I, i'm not real great with this software but we're getting there i've got that stupid sample ticker running below <laughs> but anyway hi marty i have a sub pod oh that's awesome there and um let, had, let me know what you think of it uh does it work really well um i found that they're great i'm really looking forward to getting mine back in the ground uh into the not the ground but into one of my raised beds real soon and we got good evening from O Wayne's Worm Farm. G'day, mate. And AJ, Green Topics covers a lot on worm farming as well here on YouTube. So if you're into that, a lot of people actually that watch me head over and watch AJ. So g'day, mate. And uh, thanks for coming. Check out the show. A few people saying g'day to each other in here, which is really, really cool. And uh, yeah, let me know also what part of the world you're coming in from. And... Um, we like to welcome everyone from different parts. And my good friend here, Simplify Gardening. Tony, how you going, mate? Thanks for coming and uh, your support. And um, Tony's got some really good content over on his channel as well. If you want to check out some stuff on organic gardening and composting. Rhiannon, good morning from Adelaide. G'day there. Nice to see you. Thanks so much for dropping in. And... Um, Lots of people are having a little bit of a chat here on the side. And let's see what we got here. Owain's Worm Farm. I'm listening to your book on composting and audible, Tony. Oh, that's great, mate. That's absolutely brilliant. Good on you. I'm, I'm stoked that you got that book out. I'm trying to look at some ways of writing some books and things soon. And I actually want to talk about uh, coming up in, in the near future, whether um, – I, I look at setting up like a Marty's Garden support volunteer team um, because, you know, uh, just being on my own and taking care of my daughter and stuff like that, a lot of people don't know, uh, she's hearing impaired as well. So it's a little bit more of a struggle than uh, not too much. She's, she's pretty good, but, um, you know, it can be a bit tricky and I, I, I'm not reaching all the goals that I want to get to. Um, and we're getting there, but unless I sort of get there at a certain speed, uh, we don't really get the, the income coming in and being a, a full-time single dad, run the business and go off to study as well so we can get this content rolling out. 
I need to work some type of plan. So maybe we'll look at that. Let me know if you're interested. I don't know if I'm going to do it, but if you're interested, uh, maybe we can talk about that. So it'd be a Marty's Garden support team um, where we'd look at maybe uh, what type of videos are coming out, what the audience is saying, um, looking at um, the statistics of, of the channel performance. And I would share that with you guys. And also looking at ways of developing asset products so we can keep Marty's Garden alive. And um, yeah, maybe, you know, like an extra to me books and moving into hardcovers and different things like that. So let's keep moving uh, with it and keep moving on. AJ said to have a great weekend, everyone. You hanging around, AJ, or are you out of, out of here for a bit? Anyway, look, if you've got any questions about um, underground worm farming, fire away here. Um, it'd be awesome to um, to do that. Um, Tony said that I should look at using Streamlabs. Uh, I'm just familiar with Ecamm, but um, I, sh I will go and have a look um, at that. Um, it's, I'm not so partial to any brands, things like just whatever uh, will work best and it's easy to maintain and not too hard on my dyslexia. There's too much information in front of me, I just information overload. So it needs to be sort of simply in front of me or, or I've got to take longer and longer of just using it so I just initially sort of habitually use it. That's one reason why I'm sort of happy with Ecamm, but I know it's probably not the best way to go, but... Streamlabs, I know you're using that and uh, it's working for you, mate. So thanks for that. Uh, yeah, some people still uh, still chatting in here. And I got some rainy weather down in Sydney. We are getting some, we had about 40 mil, 50 mil the other night here. Uh, it's been crazy. And um, yeah, so it's been, and I think I saw some news about over in, over in parts of Europe. They had like 20 degree days or something the other day somewhere. <laughs> which is crazy tony says it's been raining since november it's doing my head in i have 10 videos planned but need some dry weather to start filming i know it's tough mate i've been going through la nina here for uh, two years and uh yeah <laughs> so i know exactly uh what you're saying you know like far out um yeah but listen now uh, tony says marty knows my feelings on in-ground worm farms yeah we just discussed that uh, recently, I think we might have even gone over it um, on your in your live show, and I'd like if you can bring that forward again. That's okay with me. Um, if you feel comfortable with that, uh, that's no problem. Anyway, um, yeah, we'll keep moving through. Um, what I'd like to do is I'm going to be filming mine, and so if you know if you're unsure about these underground in ground worm farm systems, um, just watch how mine do over time. And then make a decision then, you know, you don't have to rush into it. But it is some way, it is a good way to have, like I said, if you're worm farming already, to have overflow. Uh, because you're already worm farming, right? And then you can, you don't have to go out and buy the sub pod. I'm just saying it's the best product around if you want to buy a good product. And they work better generally than the DIY ones. Unless you're the super duper DIY legend, you know, <laughs> you could probably make something really good. I'm not really, though. I'm not that person. But um, yeah, so just keep watching uh, the channel and seeing how I'm doing. I'm doing above ground ones that sump down, in ground ones. Um, I actually like the above ground sump system and I'd love to develop and sell my own one. Um, if I had the cash flow, uh, we could easily develop a mold um, similar to the biggest worm farms ever. They have grow systems around the bottom of them. Um, you know, it's something that if, people are listening to this guy, hey, I'd love to invest into that. Uh, maybe they can uh, reach out to me and uh, talk to about that. Um, okay, Owen's worm farm. Do the underground worm farms and trench, com trench, trench composting work on the same principle or not? No, not really, because we're looking an underground worm farm is based on compost worms, which are designed, you know, as you know, to eat worms now if you were to put if you were to do some trenching and put compost worms in there and cover over your mulch it would work uh yeah it would work uh but there would be more disbursement area you would have to build something where you keep feeding that one central zone and you're putting compost into that one central zone so there's no really need to have to have a super housing 
You know, uh, it's just an easier way to manage and control them without them dispersing. Uh, but if you're feeding one central zone, they will stay close to that area and breed and feed in that spot and wrap around each other and, you know, do all that thing to produce more cocoons. And then they'll be able to spread out easier. So, yeah, that would probably be the most easiest way to do it. Um, but if you're trench composting in the ground, that's a little bit different than, say, in a raised bed or something like that. Would be like we're talking more about native it's really more about native worms than composting worms trench trenching in the ground we'd be looking at the native worm coming in and doing the work there they don't eat it nowhere near as much as a composting worm but that works as well and they've been doing that for a very long time and some of the first ones i've seen were the italians uh trench composting in the winter uh, here in Australia and then they would they would just pour it all into the big hole and then they would cover it over a little bit of dirt again and pour in a bit more cover it until eventually then they'd let it sit for around about three months and then plant their tomatoes straight on top and they get some of the biggest tomatoes uh, you, have, you have ever seen like wow so there are other ways to do things this is just one way to do something and we're you know being a predominantly uh, moving mostly towards worm farming channels combined with the gardening, uh, I can show all the different results and share what I've been doing over the past. And as I said, if you saw, heard my story right at the beginning uh, in a sandy soil in the ground uh, with a, just a large, large bucket, well, not a large bucket, a large olive drum, I was able to pull something off. I wish I had photos of it, to tell you the truth. Oh, wow, look at this. A fifty dollars from Mohawk one six two three. Thank you so much. I think we've got some sound effects here. I don't know. We'll try them out. We'll do it. Let's see how that works. Oh yes, nice big crowd. <laughs> you, <laughs> how cool is that? Didn't know that one existed in there. Oh, thank you so much, Mohawk one six two three. Uh, you wouldn't believe how much. Um, I'm so so grateful at the moment as i said um we're probably at our lower you know like our lowest point of the year for uh for income coming in for the marty's garden so that is just absolutely wonderful thank you so much uh for that mohawk 1623 um lots of love to you and the family going into the new year blessings to you mate um let's see what simplify gardening tony has to say here Let's roll it out. Worm farms are located and maybe have a foot around it will have benefit from the nutrients, whereas a trench will have a ton of coverage. That, that, is, that is very true. Um, what I want to do, though, is, you know, like I think if you're doing large systems, like, like if we're talking more small backyards and little systems and places like mine, then yeah, if you're doing larger areas, definitely trench is the way to go. Uh, like in a space like uh, like Tony has, you wouldn't just have lots of these little underground worm farms ever. But you'll see how I'm going to be doing mine uh, in the future and how they how everything links up. And there are corridors for worms to move through, and also uh, you know for the native worms and the biology and the microbes and the fungi and everything like that. And um, these above ground systems that i'm using so i'm using in ground ones like in the raised beds and then the above ground ones um in the areas where i've actually got just growing on the land sort of thing and so i did one last year uh it was absolutely mental i grew the biggest cherry tomato bush i've ever grown in my life and it made me about four hundred dollars one plant um it it har i harvested it for around about three months it was just crazy. It was equivalent to maybe 10 plants, I reckon. I just, I never seen anything like it in my life, but it did take me, um, you know, it was at the end of my windrow where I'd been composting for a couple of years selling my compost and where I'd set it up and then that sat there for nearly oh, six months or something like that and then I planted around it. So, you know, there was a fair bit to it to actually to get to that end result. But once we got there, man, phenomenal phenomenal stuff and i'm looking forward to building uh, those again but i reckon I, I agree with tony if you're going for a bit got a bigger space um and you're doing in the ground and also you know like um 
we talk a lot about in, the, in on this channel in the past, no dig systems, um, then yeah, you're just digging the trench along the edge of your no dig garden. And if you've got a lot of staff, uh, it works brilliant. They've been doing that for so long, such a long time now. Um, just absolutely awesome. And uh, we'll keep rolling a few people across here. If you've got any questions, fire away. Um, as I'm saying, this is not the ultimate way to do it. It's just a one way to do it. And especially if you've got a small space, um, I think, and you want to keep things really tidy and you like the concept of it, you don't want to have a worm farm that's in the plastic thing that you've got to collect the water from and maintain and stuff. These are much more simple. So you can actually just stick them at the end of your raised garden bed Get all and get your, your scraps coming out, things like that. Put it in. It leaches off into the system. It does go out a bit further than a foot. It depends on how far you put your compost around the outside of the the farm and your what your garden bed garden beds made of and things like that. But I'll I'll be talking more about that uh, in the future as I uh, build out um, my one, put my sub pod uh, into the ground, and yeah, really good. I've had really good results with them. Okay, so, and let's see what else is Tony's got to say here. Don't forget, though, trench is anaerobic, and where the pod will start off aerobic and then turn anaerobic. Um, yeah, okay, it's a totally different system. Um, I don't find they will turn anaerobic because it depends on how you've built out the built out the system. But yeah, as it gets down further into layers and it's reaching less, less oxygen, but you hope that all the plants have uptaken everything and stuff like that. So we're trying to keep an aerobic system um, as much as possible. And it is good for, so, so like, say for example, you've got your sub pod in the ground and you, you want to grab a handful of castings and you're doing, you're planting some seedlings around anywhere else. You can just open the lid up, grab a handful of castings. You're digging a hole, say a couple of feet up further from your sub pod. And then you're putting that castings around your seedling, which protects seedlings. Um, it's a really good way for growing and raising seedlings because they're pH neutral and they've got a lot of um, that good bacteria actually protects, protects the roots from uh, nematodes and things like that and provides a nice slow release nutrient. So you can expand out with them. They're a little more useful than what people um, think, but it depends on how you're managing them. So remember, you can grab handfuls of castings out of it and plant further up in the raised bed and use that to save uh, to save money. Okay. I use Ecamps, Ecamp Streamlabs is brilliant. Take a look at my last live, it's amazing. Okay, I will do that. Thanks, mate. Um, don't forget to like the, li <laughs> the love stream. It's <laughs> yes, yes, please do, please do. Give us a nice big like there, and uh, we will pull this uh, this away now and bring me in because we're moving into uh, more of a Q and A situation here. If we get a question on the sub pod or underground worm farm, I'll pull the picture back across. But please, yes, give us a love like uh, to the channel and let it lets YouTube know that uh, this is um, popular. You know, good content. I'm giving lots of value and that uh, you're enjoying uh, the process. And um, yeah, so thank you everyone for turning up. And if you have come in a little bit late, we've been talking about underground worm farming. And if you missed any of it, you may wanna go back and watch uh, a part of the rerun. Now we're firing away with Q and A and any cool comments that people have got here, we will pull it across. Now I need to write that down before, um, the one that Tony said was the name of that software. Uh, you let me know, <laughs> let me know again. I know I mentioned it a couple of times, but um, yeah, anyway, we'll, we'll get there. I'll, I'll find it. All right, Blizzard in Europe and USA and Canada. Whoa. Uh, man, I saw in the news they had 20, they had 24 degree days or something like that, 19 degree days and stuff. <laughs> oh, it's classic. Leanne says here, love my sub pod, works so well. I wish the clips and the lids would not fall out when you open the lid in the front of that, but it's a wonderful system. I'm in Melbourne. Well, thanks so much for sharing. It's always good to hear that people are happy with that. And um, the crew at sub pod are a really good crew. And, um, you know, I'm sure they would love 
uh, a testimony if you ever get a chance to write them an email, send them across and say, hey, I watch Marty's Garden Show and um, we're on the live show and I wanted to send you a testimony through. And um, they would absolutely love that. And, you know, you're supporting a really good quality product that supports the future of composting, right? So there's not many really great products out there. Uh, let's go on to here. Good, you're doing well. well. We're getting there. If you're talking about my flu and stuff like that, uh, you still my voice is still a bit, <laughs> but we're we're getting there. And we got a comp comment here from uh, from Rick Thalane about trench composting. Trench composting worms eventually they die due to the lack of food, but control of moisture though. So yeah, I, I guess that would be the case depending on what you're doing and how you're making the system. But you know, I, um, earthworms move on, right? So if you're trench composting, you need to just have a, like a lot of uh, leaf litter around, a lot of mulch, and like we're talking about proper gardening, organic gardening systems, and just adding an extra element to it. And look, they just move on. You know, you dig through the garden and, you know, like at the moment, as I'm building out my permaculture space here, as I dig around in certain spots, I'm seeing more larger earthworms. As I'm mulching in certain spots, the chickens are hitting there because they're chasing those uh, those native worms and things. So then they, they do build up, drop cocoons and stuff, but we've got, to, we've got to build habitat for them at the same time for our native worms as well as, you know, like I'm into the whole thing of the composting worms in the top level and then the native worms coming up and pulling the carbon and food back down into the sub profile so we can build soils and create good drainage and more and more anaerobic more aerobic systems and you know get the microbes and fungi and everything just pumping so then we don't have to throw out as many uh, you know as much fertilizers and things like that we become more and more self-sufficient uh, over time but that's a great point and if it's done incorrectly for sure um, the worms would die off if especially the compost worms but I think the earthworms if they can move through the subsoil under the leaf litter and things like that they would move off and find food um, I think they they say that a compost worm can live for about four years but I think some of the earthworms possibly can live for like 10 years so um, even though they're a major food source they probably wouldn't last that long <laughs> Uh, let's have a look here. Uh, good, uh, if we got that. Do, 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 do. Thank you so much for the super chat. Yeah, if anyone wants to give a super chat and support the channel, <laughs> thank you so much. That would be uh, that would be really cool. Yeah, and like this, to obviously for sure, you are not knocking. I know that you're an you, mate. You're a huge advocate for composting in these systems and things like that. And um, I, I, I agree, I don't think they're good for scale, but in small systems, I think they are, are quite good. And as I said, I've provided some of the benefits before and they are perfect for some people. I'll just read out what he says. I'm not knocking in ground worm farms, Marty. I just don't think they scale, they're perfect for some people. Totally for sure. As I said before, if we're moving into bigger systems, um, trenching and things like that probably uh, is the way to go. But as I said, you haven't seen my, my above ground systems yet and they definitely work with scale if you're a worm farmer and you have and you're doing it in that perspective. Uh, Jojo Blogs, g'day mate. Actually, I'm reading them out faster than they can appear on the thing. And that sample ticker below is driving me mental on EV Muxy. <laughs> I was trying to find out how to get rid of it. And uh, I was just ticking out of time, running out of time. And um, so anyway, yeah, we are talking about the benefits and the use of underground worm farms. And I think we've come across, you know, like it's been really cool. I really enjoy our little, like a little debate in here. And we don't always have to agree on everything, right? This is the problem in the world at the moment. If you don't agree with me, I'm not talking to you. What a big load of crap that is you know what i mean like not everyone agrees we can still get along and then maybe later on you might think hey i was wrong about that you know what my pride was just hanging me on to saying i'm right but i actually i was wrong and i'm going to change my method and do it more like that and so i benefit and get better and grow and this is the beautiful thing ab about it you know what i mean like so what we've really looked at and we've discovered is that 
in scale, probably the underground worm farms probably aren't the go, but in smaller urban yards and things like that, where we've got some couple of raised beds, we've got a couple of little worm farms, and then we're overflowing into our into our underground farms to save money. We've got a lot of imports and comp, you know, um, stuff coming in from the from our cooking and things like that to to compost and stuff. So yeah, awesome. So what I recommend if you're like an enthusiast like I am. And we're going to be looking at um, my wormery uh, very soon because it's, it's still start, it's still slowly getting together. But I guess we can show the beginning stages. But I've got a compost tumbler and I've got the biggest worm farm ever. I've got a windrow and then I've got worm farms. And then so um, everything all starts working together. And because the compost worms breed so quickly in an optimum situation, you once you start getting the scale, you can really start building out quite quickly. Because if you're doubling every three months in the perfect conditions, um, you really start seeing some amazing stuff. And some people have said, well, why have you been talking about money making stuff lately? Well, when you go to scale with that, you can actually make a little bit of money and get your money back. So it actually ends up, you end up making a bit of money from it than it costing you, uh, which is, you know, a part of my self-sufficiency uh, system here is to actually be spending as less and less as possible. And if we've got some money coming in, uh, so like selling some of our compost worms, we can maybe go out and buy a bit more compost and build a windrow. Uh, we can buy another worm farm. We can build buy another composting system, things like that. And it's not costing us. Or we can actually, like, we don't need to spend any more. Um, we go, okay, I'll just, you know, I'll use that money. Maybe, maybe we'll go to the movies or something like that, you know, like. Uh, so uh, that's one reason why I've been talking um, a little bit about that. And so thank you so much. Uh, we've got here Streamlabs OBS. Now I'll, I'll write that down now, Tony. I was trying to remember what that was. As you can hear, my voice is still a bit croaky. Um, well, I'm still getting over this whole sort of thing. But yeah, so I've got written on in my... Um, so there's some links down below uh, in here to where you can support the channel to keep it rolling if you, if you feel that you're getting a lot of value from the channel and you'd like to support it. There's a few different ways you can do that. Becoming a Worm Wrangler member, access the courses in there for worm farming and raising seedlings and things like that doing it all organically using worm farming. There's also the buy me a coffee page where you can just buy me a coffee if you'd like to or become a member in there. And there's also uh, a little, we're trying to raise some money uh, for, for the new software. So um, yeah, I think probably the OBS one or the Streamlabs might be similar price to that. So we'll definitely be looking at that uh, if we can raise the money to, um, to get there. Anaerobic anaerobic conditions um i think tony's probably the man to talk to about that if he want if he wants to um i think i've just i've pulled up the pulled up the wrong one there there we go i got here as you were discussing anaerobic conditions yeah look tony's got a great book on composting and covers all that type of stuff i don't have anything like that available so if you really want to go deep in it i think um you're welcome, Tony, to drop the um, the link or whatever there on the side if people want to go um, and purchase that or listen to the audio. As one of the other people in the audience who are watching this said that they had done and were quite enjoying it. So, um, uh, yeah, so go there. All right, let's. I'll just keep reading through here. And we've got an interesting comment. I think we're a little bit off topic here, but we'll bring it across. Jojo Blogs. What I've observed, if you don't have access to rock dust, is to add some larger rocks, many different ones. The humic acids gently dissolve the rocks, and it does add more minerals to the system. Oh, yeah, for sure. All different, there's different rocks that break down faster. Uh, we've got a coffee rock on the beach here. It's a volcanic rock, and it just it, it just scrape it. It just comes apart like chalk almost. Um, and there's different volcanic rock in the soils around here where I live, and our soil is, um, some areas is red from from the iron. Uh, it's just crazy. So yeah, some of them do. And, um, but you know what? I think 
people think too much about rock dust. I'm always been an advocate of using it at the beginning when you're building up these these um, organic gardens. But in time, if you're composting well and you're doing everything well um, correctly, um, a lot of these ones would be slowly adding in. And they're finding now that a lot of the biology and stuff like that, the microbes and stuff like that actually um you know it's like an invertebrates and all these type of things as they're dying and feeding on each other they actually hold these different minerals as well so at the beginning stage if we introduce it this is just my thoughts on it if we introduce it at the beginning stages we don't need to as much as much um over time and the, the, the as the soil gets better and we're building profiles and we're building microbiology and fungi um it just nature brings it in itself somehow and you'd need to go and get soil tests and things like that but really the ultimate soil test is just looking at your plant is your plant growing you know has it got yellowing the leaves has it got veins has it got stunted has it got disease things like that and then we go okay um let's have a look at what we need to do but generally the healthier you get the soils the better your plants are going to do all right but very good point there for sure and i you know like I'm all for, yeah, those rocks. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Joe, Joe Bloggs has got a nice little comment there and saying, g'day, we've got Deborah Sutcliffe. G'day there. <laughs> there are a few people saying hello. Yeah, this is really cool. Um, and this is what I, I really like this, if people sort of like, want to sort of challenge me a little bit i really don't mind uh in some areas and like it's really good for us to do this and he says yes marty open dis discussion C constructive consider criticism is a good thing without being abusive of course 100 yeah. percent for sure yeah we just you know get into it have a good conversation have a chat and you know we come across some things like we have today and go oh well i probably won't do it that way that way's better for me um it sounds like a good system uh, to go. So if you come in late, we've talk, been talking about the underground worm farm, the uh, product, the subpod, which I am affiliated to. Um, and you can see, um, you can watch it from the very beginning. And I talk about how I first discovered underground worm farming and how it has benefited uh, what I've been doing in, in the future and how it actually possibly may be a better way for you to worm farm or adding it to your enthusiastic systems <laughs> like I do um, to uh, to get to scale to on a small space. Now, if you've got a big, big space and you're doing lots and lots, maybe, maybe not. But you have a look in the Worm Wranglers members area and you see the big ones that we've got there. You might just change your mind there. And a few people saying g'day to each other in here. And a few people having a chat, which is really, really cool. And some great stuff coming across here. And like I said, we don't have to all agree with each other. It's good to have a bit of debate if we like. Uh, Rick says here, simplified gardening with no till beds. When you're adding compost each time, there's a lot of organic matter for them to survive if kept moist. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure uh, Tony has done a lot of this um, over time and has really worked a good way to uh, get good uh, long-term results, which has worked really for, good for him uh, in scale. And it's interesting how we've gone from talking about underground worm farming to uh, a discussion about how we should have a nice, good, clean debate and learn from each other. <laughs> constructive criticism brings you to a different way of doing things before you come to your conclusion absolutely correct there and uh just brilliant um been like some great comments coming across here we've been running for about 48 49 minutes now and we usually go for an hour it might go a little bit over today and it's really great seeing watching people um in the comments box uh having a really good discussion here we're going to be kicking off on Saturdays around about the same time, so 9, 9.45 uh, a.m. I was doing 9.15 a.m. Sydney, Melbourne time, but I think 9.45 is more suitable for uh, for people around the place. I know we can't get the perfect time for everyone, but and I'll let you know uh, if we miss every, we ever miss a Saturday just in one of the posts, and um, we'll keep moving through. Now, I can't pull every comment across here, 
But if you ever do um, like a super chat, that will always always go first and, and definitely come up. We're getting more and more people turn up um, each, each Saturday now, which is really, really great. Oh, I can't place uh, admins unless you're a uh, link, unless you're an admin, mate. Okay, no problem. But um, I guess you can check it out on simplifiedgardening.com would be the place, I guess, where you would have that uh, that ebook available there. And Tony is coming on to um, to do an interview uh, in the near future. We just got to organise a time. I had a few other people that I wrote to didn't get back to me, we were supposed to be maybe coming on today and next week, but haven't heard from them. So um, that's another thing I'm thinking about. If we're doing like a Marty's Garden Support Network team, um, that maybe we, someone could help me organise guests uh, to come on um, through the week and, and, and on the weekends um, to do uh, interviews and also um, as live show guests and things like that. And maybe you want to become a live show guest as well. Well, you can always get me on Marty Ware in Facebook, um, the, you know, like Messenger. That's one place you can get me. Uh, let's keep putting it across. Okay. Green sand. Someone's talking about. Someone's telling, giving me a green tea, ginger, turmeric, and uh, black pepper for uh, with pure honey. <laughs> yeah, feed the soil. This one, this one. Feed the soil, not the plants. Go time. <laughs> I gave you a plug in my video coming up soon, mate, about that one. <laughs> Uh, I've got a little bit of a joke there behind it because um, I was actually using some similar terminology. But I'm moving. I've got to get a new one, Tony, because I don't want to use the same stuff, mate. I think I've maybe – don't know if I've grabbed that subconsciously from you somewhere or from another Aussie somewhere along the lines, but I love that terminology. And feed the soil, not the plant. So I know that's on the front of your ebook, and, uh, yeah, your your book. Hey, V, feeling better? So he says here that the he, um the ecam pulls up the, the the text faster than this one, but hey Marty, feeling better. Well, we're getting there, mate. We're getting there. Uh, we'll see. Um, each day, you know, I feel a little bit better, and then I sort of down a bit, and then up a bit, and so I'm able here to put on the live show, and I'm back out back to work again. So uh, we got a question here from Mrs. Wobbles. How do worms correct soil pH? I would say they don't. The only way that they would do it is that um, the castings are pH neutral. So when we're using, adding 10% of the castings into a, a mix, uh, it's not going to dramatically change the pH, say, as like a uh, if we're adding a dolomite or a calcium or something like that along the line. So... But as we're building biology and things like that and building microbiology and stuff like that, the pHs do, I find, uh, balance themselves out. So they're a part of the soil web. So as, as far as a functioning part of the soil web, then yeah. Now we've got to look at, um, we've got to think about uh, pH and stuff like that, about, you know, when, when we're looking at sort of NPK and we're looking at like, I don't even say that, you know, it's really the old school way of gardening with chemical fertilizers, how we've been taught to think and feel about plants, because obviously, you know, like they're the major elements to grow plants. But um, I'm trying to get people to think way more of that and use the terminology of like Rick said, is feed the soil, not the plants. And then once the soil gets healthy, then it, then the soil feeds the plants. And so we really want to sort of like um, in the beginning stages of building out new gardens. We wanna be looking at the pH. And I do talk about that in my upcoming video um, with the raised garden bed section, how I had to deal with um, an alkaline uh, soil and how I'm slowly getting it back to a better, slightly acidic pH. Um, but yeah, once we've got, once got these things set up, we shouldn't have to worry about it. The soil should be uh, just going to a, a natural sort of like, Alkaline soils will keep going alkaline if the mineral base has got an alkaline base to it. So there are some places, they, they call them chalky soils, and they're more alkaline in some areas where some places have more acidic soils. But generally, 
Um, overall, when we're creating our own garden, we're looking at being slightly acidic than um, than than alkaline. Anyway, I'm getting a bit off track here, and um, it's a subject that I'm quite passionate about. Let's Jojo Block's got something to do with underground worm farming here. Underground worm farming does help a lot with having temperature extremes in confined containers. That is a great point and something that I didn't put down uh, in my list here. So thank you so much, Joe Blogs Blogs. Um, that is a really good point. Um, so if you're in a place that has extreme temperatures, and I've had some people write to me recently saying, oh, I've lost all my worms, it was 40 degrees. Oh, what do I do? I've got to start again. Well, if you had your... Uh, above ground worm farms and then you had an underground worm farm um, set up and you're using you're taking away so as they're breeding up you're getting bigger numbers you're moving them into the underground one that stability you wouldn't lose it and then you could actually grab some back out of the underground one and put it back into the above ground system so that's a really great point and i really like that that's a great 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 comment and if people are listening to that i think that's a really good answer um, to that problem for sure. <laughs> Morning tea rake, coffee at hand. Um, there we go, AV. AV's got a, uh, a very popular worm farming channel. I think you're in, in the UK. Is that where you are exactly? Or in, in England? Like, I, I get mixed up with what's going on over in Europe and all these places. But, um, yeah, AV's been around for years now. And, uh, yeah, does enthusiast blogging or vlogging on uh, worm farming. He learned a lot over on his channel. It's so strange that it's already Saturday morning for you. For me, it's still Friday evening. And I still haven't eaten dinner yet. Yeah, well, it's confusing these time zones and things like that. But thanks for coming over, uh, AV, and um, checking out uh, my live show. I really do appreciate it. You're always welcome to come on the show one time uh, if you'd like to as a guest. It would be wonderful to have you. And I'm sure people would love um, to see you uh, here, AV, if you're okay with uh, doing the live. Not everyone's uh, into it. Let's get a... Uh, a comment across from Cheryl here. Can I make a suggestion? Try something that someone else is using that they can help you with, that it's not so hard on your own learning needs. Try something that someone else can help, someone else is using that they can help you with, so it's not so hard on your own learning needs. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think we just it's just a matter of like with these live softwares is just they're all a little bit different some are similar and it just takes a bit of time getting used to them it's more really um having some admins in around um some people to help you uh get like bring in guests and things like write out some emails and organize times on calendars and those little things that just take up this there's lots of time and talking about you know like looking at the comments and looking about what's been going on in the shows and what people like the most and things so we can replicate and produce um, something better so almost like a producer in a way um, is what we're what we're looking at uh, let's keep going on but great comment and thank you so much um, for this your suggestion Cheryl AV, so here's a good plug for you, mate. You're one of the first worm-related channels I came across. <laughs> Cheryl said something here. I'd be worried about losing my worms that I paid loads for, and yes, I'm good at DIY, la, 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 the challenge. Sure. Yeah, well, um, you know, like it may be a good idea to have an underground system if you don't already, uh, if you've got real hot um, temperatures in certain areas. Um, Tony's going to say good night now, I think. Um, I don't know what time it is there, but sorry, folks. I need to get some sleep. I have work in a few hours. We'll catch you all shortly. Have a great week. Thank you, Tony. Have a great day. Um, yeah, good sleep, mate, and uh, all the best. And uh, we'll chat soon, eh? Hey, V, I'm still up and down too. Glad to see you're feeling good enough to run a live show. Yeah, you've been, you mentioned you had a bit of a flu. Uh, yeah, mate, all the best. Hopefully you come good soon and uh, get over this bit of a bit of the um, 
yeah, that's a horrible thing. It's one of the worst ones I've had in a while. A few people saying goodbye to Tony, and um, yeah, he's you know good guy, and I, I always appreciate it when everyone turns up, and we get a few other people, a few other YouTubers turn up as well to support the channel and uh, give some good input into um, what we we're, we're talking about here. All right, here we go again. Issues. Let's bring across. Issue is money. Money is hard for everyone, and ten pounds here and there is okay, but big bucks regularly is a no go for me. <laughs> uh, not really sure what we're coming across here. Dad's amazing adventures. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, my friend and brother in Christ. Um, I know you've been travelling through uh, Asia and having a good old time, and I must say, I'm a little bit jealous. <laughs> I'm not there with you. I love that place. I lived, been, I travelled through there for years. Lived there. My daughter was born there. I uh, love surfing and travelling through, eating the food. You know, a bit of work. You know, ran some businesses there. Things like that. So cool. And um, yeah. Anyway, we'll keep on moving along here. And um, a few people chatting in here, and having some great little comments. Uh, to mention here to get the ball rolling and add some value to the show. Biochar is a very good amendment for both alkaline, high pH and acidic, low pH. Yeah, love the stuff. Uh, if you've got it lying around, um, and I have actually swapped it for worm castings in the past, and I found it worked really well in the in the, the big worm farms, actually, to tell you the truth. Um, good stuff. <laughs> but... To do with the heat, I think, like the, the heat about um <laughs> about some of the weather they've had down maybe down in Adelaide and stuff like that. It's been really hot, so it's put the worm farm in the back of the Holden <laughs> that, that AC. <laughs> That's our core, mate. Right, I love. I'm sorry, I'm just going outside. We're going to turn the engine on and put the aircon on. Uh, I've got to save the worm farm. <laughs> That's brilliant. It'll make a great little a great little skit, uh, and I wouldn't doubt that you probably did that. You probably did that. <laughs> okay ab you have a good night mate and uh enjoy your pizza i had pizza la last night actually a few people saying goodbye to tony and uh ab there and um yeah it's been it's been a really cool live show um hopefully everyone's gotten like um some good value out of it and learnt that you know there are different ways we can compost and worm farm and get similar results, whatever is sort of best for you. Uh, I've been talking today about uh, underground worm farms, and I started right at the beginning of the show talking about how I built my first one and got really good results for it and really enjoyed it in a small space garden. And um, I was growing tomatoes like this. Look at these. This one's a, it's a, I'm saving this for seed. Got a little bit scratched from the side of the plants. This one's called a tigerello. And I'm looking at possibly saving a seed or growing some seedlings. We're really going into actually like at the moment because um, I'm off work from my job, about to go back into study again. And like the traffic to the channel has been really low because it's not growing season and stuff like that. So this is probably one of the hardest times of the years, years for me. So we're looking at maybe, I don't know, maybe I might grow some seedlings of these and see if I can sell them on Facebook Marketplace. This one's the Tigerella. And um, this one's the Indigo and heirloom cherry, heirloom tomatoes. No, no, they're a little bit bigger than a cherry, right? They're really good size. I really like them. This one's, um, they've got a bit of a different flavor. This one's more, hang on, this one's more salty. And this one's not sweet. It's a little bit more sour. Karen likes this one. And this, the Tigerello, and most of the reason why I grew this is because it grows better in a cooler climate. And we've, we've got La Nina at the moment. Um, this is great. So late season, early season tomato. And I reckon it performed quite well even through the hotter days. And this one here it has like a black inside the skin and goes into a deep red flesh uh, inside. It doesn't have a lot of seed. Um, and man, I'm telling you, this is a brilliant tomato. And, you know, like growing things like these with the worm farming systems work really good. And people might be able to guess what that is. I'll leave it to you to see if you can guess what that with. Starts with the letter R. And it should be happy two words. We'll see if you can guess uh, which one it is. 
Uh, and then we'll, we'll head off soon. And, um, and we'll go for that. Someone says here, the local government needs to incentivize household worm farms. They do here in some states actually like um, have some systems where um, they will incentivize uh, worm farming and they actually give you a bit of a discount. Uh, but I don't know a lot about it, but yeah. And we got Cheryl said something about Streamlabs. I've got that there written down now, Cheryl. And Mrs. Wobbles, let's get this comment across here. Marty and all, what meals have you been making from your garden? I just had basil, pesto pasta with cherry tomato and leftover turkey breast. Excuse me, a little bit of a hiccup there. Uh, great question. I've been mostly just making sort of salad stuff. So I've been getting the tomatoes. Uh, my lettuce is finished now, but I'm harvesting Kang Kong to replace for that, for the lettuce. And I've had some um, cucumbers and things. So I'm showing these harvests in the next video coming up, what I've got. And really just putting them on sandwiches, stuff like that. And, and also like when I, I made pizza last night, so not too much cheese because of my flu, but we got oregano, uh, we had tomato, and then we had, um, what else did we get from it? Garlic chives and and basil. And so we put that onto the onto the pizza, but you can also make all those Italian sauces with those same ones, and you can add thyme as well to that. So I've got the thyme. So thyme, oregano, parsley, flat leaf parsley, curly parsley, uh, tomatoes. Uh, make a really good sauce. And um, yeah, so that's been some of my ingredients to some things. And then also uh, the coriander to make um, these like fin, not 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 fish ones, but Thai mince uh, chicken patties. And so soy sauce, fish sauce, a little bit of sugar and the coriander and then making them into like a mince um, burger patty sort of thing or into a loaf. Um, that's the two of the things that I've been doing and a few others, but without getting too far into it, but um, be interesting to see what other people uh, put in here. And we got the first one from Jojo Blog said that was a Roma. And a few other, and De Deborah Sutcliffe uh, down under said Roma, but Deborah Sutcliffe, you're closer very close. So she did mini Roma. And then she said, cherry Roma. Yes, it's a cherry Roma. Not really that fussed on this plant, to tell you the truth. I, I prefer, I, I don't know if I would grow. I've got seed fruit. I don't know if I grow it again. I'd be more comfortable to go for the, the Indigo or this one. Actually, this one here, the Tigerello at the moment, just to do with what's going on with the climate and stuff like that. And I just love the flavor of this and it produces a lot of fruit. And you're not waiting for this big, massive tomato. So the longer the tomatoes have to grow for, the higher chance of a bird getting them, a rat or a mouse getting it, uh, some type of worm getting in and drilling into the side, you know. Um, so I'm a big fan of uh, anything sort of this size and under. Uh, so we can get a quicker harvest and less chance of uh, pests and disease uh, getting to it. And my old my dad's here. Basil Brush. No, nope, that's your old dad tuning. Basil Brush was a show that was on TV, mate. You'd show, uh, that was one of my favourite shows as a kid. <laughs> that's pretty funny that you come up with that. And my father, public speaker extraordinaire. From Sydney, Australia, check out his channel if he's been putting anything up there to do with uh, public speaking. But I know he's just dropping in to say g'day and check out uh, his son. And someone here said hello. So you've made, mate, you've made a mate in here. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, Jojo Blogs. What do we got here? I'm growing my first lot of Solanata tomatoes. I love the high zest flavour of them. Quite a lot of fruiting at the moment. Can't wait to eat them. Yum, yum. That sounds good. I don't know if I've grown those ones before. There's a few crews saying g'day uh, to my father there. And um, yeah, that's really, really cool. So look, we're not going to stay on too much longer. We've gone for an hour and, and nine minutes. And um, what I normally do is my with the Ecamm software that I had, I, I run a song in the background um, for uh, to the river 
by Michael Shines, and that's sort of like a theme song for my channel and for the end. But I think what we'll do now is we'll um, we'll drag across the comments uh, as we say goodbye to everyone. And if you've come in late, check the rerun. Some really great stuff in here today. It's been a really fun live show to make and some really awesome information. Some people are really adding a lot of value uh, in the comments and things like that. And I really do appreciate each and every one of you. So send it across. Um, say uh, say hello. and I mean, say goodbye. Say goodbye to your friends in here as well because people are making a lot of friends in here. And um, we will be back uh, Saturday uh, 9.45 uh, again. Um, so hang on. Nine, yeah, nine forty-five. So I'm thinking about actually, we've been running for an hour and ten minutes. So yeah, nine forty-five, uh, Sydney, uh, Melbourne uh, time, which is about half an hour further than what we've been doing before. And we'll see how that goes uh, for the time. If there's any changes, or you know, sometimes we get problems with software and things like that. Might run exactly on time, but when you log in, if you see that the live show is put up there, we generally get on. I generally get on pretty close. Looking at maybe getting a support team to help me uh, launch uh, things further into the future, raise some money, maybe write some books, um, you know, uh, look at different ways of talking about and creating content, things like that. And um, yeah, we'll grow there. Okay, let's start bragging these across. Thanks guys, bye for now. <laughs> Wish I had the music to run across. I don't. I can't really sing the song, um, but yeah, we'll just drag these across. As, and then we get to the last one, um, we'll do that. And I'll have a look at Streamlabs. Remember, um, you can go across. There's a whole lot of links down below, uh, behind this, below this video. If you want to help support the channel, uh, as I said, it's a bit of a rough time at the moment. This time of year, uh, we don't have much uh, income coming in, and um, the channel's not really even covering rent at the moment. So if you can help, then we can maybe look at um, putting that money in towards um, looking at the Streamlabs or going with the Ecamm Live again, whichever feels uh, the right way to go. And uh, you maybe just want to check out the Worm Wranglers members area and or, you know, like become a member over at Buy Me Coffee. Up to you guys. Um, always nice i always appreciate any of your support and thank you everyone for uh, the super chats and any of you coming through later on super stickers things like that and it says here those black and red ones sound interesting mate i'll keep my eye open for some seeds yeah the black and red indigo rose and i do talk about these um in the next uh coming uh video which will be out uh next week which is about two thirds in production uh at the moment All right, we're getting close to finishing off now, guys. And um, I just want to say thank you all for coming. Uh, have a great new year. I know we've, I've said that before, but we know it's the 7th of January today. And I think it's my mother's birthday today, so I'm going to go and give her a ring and uh, wish her a happy birthday. And, um, yeah, the Mrs. Wobbles, to the river, to the river we go. That's the name of the song. If we get the new software up and running, we'll get the songs back in and... Um, the content coming up is going to be a lot of vlogging content uh, but, but around the garden, the worm farming. We're also out to visit Peppy's Farm, 560 Farms in Lismore. Shoot some content out there. So have a great day, everyone. Happy everything. And uh, we'll see you at the next video and live show next weekend, Saturday or Friday, whatever time whatever you are around the world. Stay safe and lots of love. God bless. Bye for now.